Hello and welcome to the podcast. The COVID-19 pandemic and the subsequent lockdown has brought to the world in general and our society and nation in particular enormous structural, economic, political and material changes and have transformed the functioning of governments globally. But perhaps what has changed the most is our perspective on life and existence. We got and made time to think about concerns significant to us and we paid closer attention to the small things along with the big ones. Today we observe better and every day learn some more, reflect deeply and shape convictions that will make us better in the coming days. How far and how intensely has this pandemic affected our very being and how significantly has it molded the person we are going to be in the post-pandemic phase? Let's listen to the take of Ms. Lisa John Mundekel, Assistant Professor, Department of English, on this matter. Yet another Earth Day passed by, silently, but with a guilt-stricken humanity, unable to observe it with its usual ease and lackadaisical mindset. The world is caught unaware in a stasis and stands perplexed before a pandemic. The human world is made to bow before the crowning glory of a vicious virus. As this untethered coronavirus sways to the rhythm of its war dance, the world feverishly shivers of panic and dread. Life is shaken off its normalcy. We are left pondering. Are we at the portals of a new normal? What will that new normal be? A distraught humanity is still on the hunt for answers. Different guilds have already made attempts to read their own logic into the cause for the outbreak of the pandemic. The religious, the xenophobes, the vegans and the animists have all generously contributed their interpretations for the same. However, despite all these speculated postulations, a great relief was a so-called improved scientific temper which urged people to follow scientific ways to curb and control the spread of infection by using masks and hand sanitizers and practicing social distancing. COVID-19 is definitely not the first of its kind, but paradoxically it is unprecedented. The world has witnessed epidemics aplenty earlier too. SARS, Nipah, MERS, Ebola, avian influenza and more. But thanks to globalization, we now have a global epidemic. A pandemic in all its right propensity and spread, sparing no nation. The limping world is at present unable to anticipate the shape of a post-corona world. Humanity is bedridden in a sanatorium, expecting recuperation. However, the status quo signals only a dismal, uncertain future. What will be the environment the growing generation and the ones to come inherit? In all possibility, one of woes and worries, pandemics and deaths, uncertainty and fraught. The crucial question, therefore, is 
how to avert such an abysmal future and bequeath a bright morrow to the progeny how to spare them from being a masked generation whatever said and done this rude pandemic urges us to rethink an activity detested by the digital paced world the more annoyed humanity becomes of this act of rethinking the more severe the impact of their forward strides on the planet and the ecosystem turning back we see that the drain cost on nature's resources necessitated humanity to think along the lines of industrial production of consumables the diabolic nexus between man's avarice and intellect quickly tackled the issue of an ever increasing demand of food by resorting to factory production consciously negligent of its byproduct newer and mutated versions of vicious pathogens hungry for a host the inevitable result of this has been and is an array of zoonotic infectious diseases in nature driven by the many human induced environmental changes largely affecting human beings and disrupting the ecosystem integrity which underlines human health and survival humanity has to be wary of the fact that though in pristine ecosystems biological mechanisms have an innate capacity for resilience and recuperation the current rate of change is a little too high paced for them to adapt to and survive when pandemic and lockdown race with the words in a lexicon to reach the top of its trending words chart humanity obstinately stands to bounce back to its normalcy unwilling to rethink unwilling to change its pace unwilling to even slow down a bit and look back at the catastrophes past for a techno-paced humanity cooped up in air-conditioned cubicles glued to the blue lit screens 24 into 7 the verdant bower of nature's foliage the intermittent warmth and chill of the winds the charm of the dawn and dusk hues are all alien experiences ascribed almost as an unattainable distant utopian dream a slice of nature often becomes an experience in the form of an image captured by the highest megapixel camera and displayed on their screens be it generation x y or z this pandemic has become a leveler sparing none and making everyone susceptible it is bound to have taught the world many a thing true meaning of life of health of hygiene of simplicity of self sufficiency and lots more the mad rush to the grocery stores the panic purchase that at least some or many of us did should fill us with remorse and not relief we are bound to pause and ponder we are to pick a lesson from the crisis the big need to change our lifestyle the pandemic and the lockdown that followed exposed our own handicap the handicap of dependency the lack of self adequacy this planetary crisis should bring to each one of us 
the echoes of the pleas of Greta Thunberg and the like, the activism of Vandana Shiva and others, the woes and throes of the marginalized poor. Now is a time to repent of our avarice. Let us feel the power and pleasure in small things. Let us learn to grow our own food. Let us learn to cook our own food. Let us learn to mop our own floors. Let us learn to wash our own clothes. Let us learn to write our own pages. Let us learn to paint our own walls. Let us learn to mend our things and our own selves and ways. Let us go back to our basics. Let us learn to set our priorities right. Let us learn to create our own self-worth on who we are and what we are able to do and not what we own. The big challenging question that looms before each one of us therefore is, when this phase passes, how will we re-emerge in the post-corona world? And who will we be? Rather, who should we be? Moving through a crisis with sustained resilience is for sure not an easy task. But once we wade over to reach the other side, re-emerging from the crisis, we are sure to bob and weave on in life and work. However, let this lockdown phase be a time for us to look within, to explore ourselves more, to equip ourselves more, to adjust to the new normal that awaits us. To understand, acknowledge and adapt. Let us strive to perfect our inner locus of power, a composite whole of our skills, our knowledge, our principles, our beliefs, our talents and our qualities. True it is that this lockdown stops us from moving outside, but we sure can take a trip inwards to our own selves and gear ourselves up to change for good and to embrace that change. As Heraclitus once said, no man ever steps in the same river twice, for it is not the same river and he is not the same man. Let the post-pandemic face see a wiser and better homo sapien re-emerging from the crisis having learned from his own flaws of the past and ready to mend his ways for a sustainable healthy and hygienic future thank you thank you lisa ma'am for your insights into the influence that the pandemic has had and is exerting on the human race today.